Welcome back to the Alaska Huskies franchise. We are currently in the NHL draft period. The Alaska Huskies have the number two overall pick stuck behind Steve Eiserman's Detroit Red Wings and in front of the LA Kings. Now, Peter Vasky has some things to think about here. He could put some people on the trading block. He could try to make some things happen to try to get that number one overall pick. We currently have three number one picks or round one picks, I should say, with a multitude of of round two, round three, round fours. We got a ton of picks to trade away. We got a ton of assets to give up. And Peter Vasky does just that. So he goes out and he acquires the number three overall pick from the LA Kings. Now, he's trying to go after Hunter Vasky at this point. He's trying to work some type of trade with Steve Eiserman to try to go get the number one overall pick. He packaged the number two pick, the number three pick for the number one and the Red Wings don't take it. However, throwing in Corey Jaguer, they take it. So Peter Vasky, knowing full well that Corey Jaguer not happy with his playing time, not really necessarily happy with the way the franchise is going, decides to move on from Corey and probably gives him a better chance at playing time and better chance at progression there with the Detroit Red Wings. As you know, the Huskies right now, they have a goaltender log jam. So we trade a bunch of assets away to try to make this trade happen and Peter Vasky does it. So he's able to draft his son, 23 goals and 59 assists in 65 games during the QM JHL season. 18 years old, left-handed shot, six foot three. He's got some good size, he's a playmaker. He's the number one consensus overall player. He was gonna be a Detroit Red Wing if the Huskies did not make that trade. Now you gotta ask yourself, the Huskies had number two and number three locked up. They could have drafted Modine and Garrison, and you gotta wonder, did the Red Wings make out big? Did they win this trade? Did they win the deal? Everybody across all of the NHL, across the hockey world, has been saying that Hunter Vasky is the truth. So you gotta wonder if both of those players are gonna end up being better, and being better for the Red Wings franchise than Hunter Vasky will be for the Huskies franchise. So we'll have to find out. A lot of storylines left to be played out here, but round two, here's the Huskies' next pick. We could go with Brandon Lasowski or going down with defenseman Gustavs Loktianov. Yes, a top six defender, left-handed shot, six foot one, 18 years old, another young guy. Now, the difference between Brandon Lasowski and Loktianov is about four places in ranking overall ranking so his potential is elite the scouts recommendation here is that you go with this guy we've we've had a lot of issues offensively but i know that i trust i trust my x factor guys i trust the guys the custom prospects that are on this team so we're gonna go with gustav's loktianov i can give you a little spoiler there so again ranking wise he's not that much different than lasowski so we're going to go with Loktianov. I know our defense needs a little bit of a little bit of love and care because <laughs> the way that it went last season was not good. Plus, we get the offer back from the Ottawa Senators. So they offer this to us again. They still are trying to give us Zaitsev, and we end up taking this trade. So they move up. They take our number 49 pick. We still had our number 50, which is what we're at right now. And we've got some players to look at here. We got Jordan Gustafson. We can take him. He's got a late potential with another another forward. He's a center, left-handed shot. We need those. We've got a lot of right-handed shots on this team. Gustafson would be a solid player, but you know, with the goalie being traded, with Corey Jaguar being traded, might as well try to fill that spot that we just got rid of with Cedric McGuire. And that's exactly what Peter Vasky is going to do. Let's go back over here to round number three. We've got a couple picks here. Now, we're going to end up taking Ant Antonin Vero. We're going to take him. He's a bottom six forward potential, but he played well with Hunter Vasky in one of the games that I was streaming in Discord a while ago, and he seems like he's got some chemistry with Vasky. We're going to make this pick. He actually, I think he ended up scoring a goal in that game when we got some Hunter Vasky highlights. So I like the pick. I think it made sense, and there is the drafted players for us there so we dropped we took number one and we dropped all the way down to 46 and 50 those were our next two picks in this nhl draft but as far as exclusive contracts go we end up signing all of our guys back which was nice which was good to see and now we get into the actual nhl 
big time free agent list. You got Alexander Barkov here, Patrick Lang, Latang, Radulov, I should say, Riley. So we've got a lot of players up here on a board, but Barkov's asking for 10.3, and the only thing that we can do is we can only offer him about $4 million. So that, I mean, there's nothing, there's no wiggle room right now here for the contracts for the Huskies. So we gotta go a little bit cheap. You gotta go a little bit cheap. Do you go with Riley Smith? He's a little bit older. Another winger doesn't really fit what we're trying to do. Would be asking for a lot more money. And we're looking at other players here. Can't seem to find anybody. Now looking at a lot of older players like Zdeno Chara, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe. These types of players would fit really nicely because they're only looking for about a one-year, two-year deal. They're not really that expensive. And plus, Joe Thornton still got some. He's still got something in there. He's got. He's an 85 overall player. He can give us a little something. And so can Johnny Boychuk. I'm looking at Johnny Boychuk here, along with Matt Molson, another winger. But I'm looking for more defensive depth. Johnny Boychuk, we don't have any information on, but you know he's he should be around a 78, 75, something around that, around that line and overall. It makes sense to me to go a little bit cheaper on these really aging veterans they can kind of teach these young guys and we're strapped for cash as it is so Boychuk signs Joe Thornton signs he's gonna be really good for this team and especially these young centers I think it's only gonna make sense for us so here's a quick look at the rest of the NHL and who signed where Alexander Barkov signed the big contract going to the Stars we got Latang going to the Avalanche Radulov going to the Buffalo Sabres Thomas Hurdle going back to the Sharks Klingberg to the Flyers, we've got Forsberg signing with the Blue Jackets. Dang it! And then we got Matthias Ekholm there going to the Kraken. That's unfortunate because I'm, I'm a little sidebar here. I'm a Nashville Predators fan, guys. If you didn't know that, even though I'm from Michigan, yeah, kind of weird, right? So Red Wings, Predators, a little bit of a rivalry. But man, it sucks. I, I even in virtual world, like I hate seeing the Nashville Predators struggle. <laughs> so they lose Forsberg, they lose Ekholm. That stinks. That stinks. But Johnny Gaudreau, that's a big signing for Tampa Bay. Tyler Ennis going to the Flyers. So then there's Patrick Lane back again and Latang with the Avalanche. Marc-Andre Fleury, that's a big signing. So they got Latang and Marc-Andre Fleury. So, you know, three signings. They also got another goaltender here. I think the Avalanche had a pretty solid offseason. Aaron Dell going to the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit had a pretty good offseason as well. Carl Modine, they got their goaltender. They got... Zach Garrison, right? Yeah, Zach Garrison, center left wing. I almost forgot. But what would you guys have done? Would you have made those two? Would you have made those trades? Would you have gotten rid of Corey Jaguer? Would you have done those trades that Peter Vasky did to get a franchise altering player like his son, like Hunter Vasky? Or do you think that Peter's getting a little too kind of in over his head a little bit? I'd love to know what you guys' thoughts are in the comment section. So looking at the AHL and the NHL lines going into this year number two we've got juice boxer bazopany keesler carconi four guys that were up at the nhl level last season that were moved down to the ahl and their overall didn't really change a whole lot you know peter vasky's looking at this and thinking you know this is a this is a this is a big season for us you know loktianov here's one of our draft picks they got albatross and willis so there's six guys there we got isaac lopez down he's now at a 67 overall player just not quite good enough quite yet to to start over 10 deck but vasky says let's do it let's start isaac lopez because i want those guys to get some more progression i want those guys to improve same thing here with our new lines for the huskies level we got lad at we got andrew lad here at a 78 on the third line we got vasky on the second line lazendahl 67 on the first so a little bit of a shakeup here at the NHL level, but overall I think it's going to be good for the Huskies. Now, take a look at this. We've got Cooper Hodges telling Hunter Vasky's father, the big man of the whole entire franchise, he doesn't believe in his son. <laughs> he doesn't think that Hunter Vasky is going to make it. He says we need to give him a nine-day trial, a nine-game trial. Now, without causing any waves with the new head coach, the coach that ended up turning the Husky season around in the second half of the year. You know, Vasky says, okay, this guy's opinion is worth a little something, right? I mean, this guy turned it around with, with these players, with this roster. The roster's better now, as it is right now. So let's just not cause any waves. Let's give this guy what he wants. Let's let's see 
how my son is going to prove him wrong, right? So he's going to get a nine-game trial with 15 games. 15 game span, nine games he'll have to start and try to make an impact. So I think this is kind of a cool storyline. Hunter Vassie's really gonna have to hit the ground running and prove his dad right that he traded the number two and the number three overall pick plus a up and coming goaltender to go get his son in this franchise. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you in the next one later on next week. As always, thank you for watching and peace.